How are we? We'll try and get through this quickly and get back on schedule. Um, so, as Deepak said, you know, we, we started a manufacturing business um, that was focused on supercritical CO2 extraction. And, you know, we've been invested in the cannabis business for a very long time. Uh, 2011 was our, our first investment in the real estate front. And then from there, it was a plant food company and a lighting company. We've traditionally been uh, in, in the partnership side, in the, in the pick and shovel side of, of the business. So we have a very different view. I mean, we work in a lot of the recreational markets uh, in California. We've powered uh, most of, of, of the large Canadian LPs if they're in the extraction space. And, you know, now we have a big team in, uh, in, in the EU market. So traditionally, when our clients are growing into a new market, we, we have to seed them we have to you know it's one thing to make the machines and, and put them in place but it's another thing to train support service have spare parts um, and, and that's really where our infrastructure comes from so hence the uh, more than more than manufacturing but you know as we talk about it we're a team of 107 we are Canadian based but um, we have Canada United States uh, offices in Bogota um, Netherlands we have, you know, just equipment across the globe, and we're just expanding it to Australia now. But the reason for that, and what we really wanted to talk about today, is, um, well, I'll give you a quick shot there of, of that's our facility, in mean manufacturing in Canada. Um, but really wanted to focus on on extraction and sort of debunk some of the myths. We we get a lot of questions around, you know, what's the best extraction methodology? Is ethanol better than CO2? Um, really all it boils down to is, is what is the input product coming in and what are you looking to turn it into, right? And then, and then our team will help you fill in those middle pieces. One thing we do educate is the only guarantee in this market as we move forward is, is going to be change. So having a flexible uh, operating system, having something that can, can work under very wide operating parameters, in my opinion, is, is going to be the key to success because half the products that are going to be manufactured in, in a year from now are just being thought of or researched right now. So, you know, when you look at the markets that have all evolved, I mean, as Reiki was saying earlier, in, in the Danish market, you saw that spike when oils came to the market, right? I mean, especially in medical markets, physicians are much more comfortable pushing forward with dose-controlled products or tinctures or soft gels, you know, topicals, things that, you know, that they're more comfortable with. Now, when you get into the manufacturing side of that, it becomes very, very important to, number one, understand how to keep consistency in your manufacturing uh, platform. Um, you know, especially in a GMP environment, there's a lot of things that you need from your equipment manufacturer. And so, you know, GMP is not a badge that we can just stick to the machine. It's, it's an entire facility uh, documentation from cleaning SOPs. I mean, as a manufacturer, we have to track all of the steel, where that, you know, which forge it came from, which welder welded that pressure vessel, the testing SOPs, you know, all of the validations. It's, it's a long five-step process. So instead of taking a whole bunch of time and going through uh, each and every piece, we do have those upstairs, um, which goes through it in detail if anyone has any questions. But, you know, for us, we have to be able to ensure that our clients are, when they're putting cannabis into the front end, so in this system here, you know, this is a 45 liter vessel on either side. You'd put 10 kilos of, of, of cannabis into that machine. And then supercritical CO2 or liquid CO2, the power of that solvent is, is its selectability. So with different temperature and pressure combinations, we can isolate or our clients can isolate different parts of the plant. So, you know, if if we're just isolating CBD and THC, which a lot of people have been talking about today, you know, those, those can be easier to get out than some of the smaller phytocannabinoids and, and, and different parts of the plant. I mean, there's been a lot of conversation about THCA or CBG or CBN, and, and you know, a lot of exciting research is being done on that. Um, so in that process, as we were talking about, I mean, the, the liquid or supercritical fluid would come over the plant product picks up those oils that we're looking to isolate, and then it's dropped out in, in a secondary chamber, and we make what's called a closed loop extractor. So that CO2 actually goes in a loop around um, and is reused. Now, traditionally batch to batch, you're gonna, there'll be a cleaning SOP on the equipment, and that's really where you, you, know, you develop those in, in partnership with your QA team and, and us, the manufacturer. 
But the extraction step, while it's, a, while it's a very important part of the process, right? I mean, ultimately, we have to grow the, the plant, and then we can only extract up to 100% of, of, of what was grown. But then you're going to get out a crude oil, so it's going to have THC, CBD, fats, waxes, you know, and, and other pieces in it. And then we have to send it into the lab. So, you know, we had our team put together sort of a step-by-step -step piece. And, and ultimately, going through that entire process is really what's going to determine, you know, the best extraction methodology for the type of product you're looking for. But traditionally, you know, you're going to grind the product to increase the surface area. Um, so, you know, traditionally it's ground, be it trim to the consistency of a, of a ground coffee. Then it goes into an extraction step and then a step called winterization. So there you're removing the fats and waxes, which we traditionally want to remove out of the process. And that's done with some type of filtration, traditionally with a cold ethanol process. Um, from there, we go into a solvent recovery, and you take that ethanol out of the process, and then you have a, a winterized crude oil. And I mean, we could spend a lot of time on all of this, but I, I, you know, I won't bore everyone with, with all the details. We're, our team upstairs is happy to walk anyone through if, if they have some detailed questions. Um, but where we really spend a lot of time, and, and, and especially in a market like the EU, where there's a ton of pharma experience and, and a lot of extraction experience, but, you know, as we were talking about on the panel yesterday, as Canadian firms or, or as EU firms develop, right, there's been a lot of lessons learned already, you know, even into the recreational markets, which are extremely different than the regulated markets in, in a medical side here. But someone who's making half a million vape cartridges a month, those bottlenecks in their facility are, are going to be mirrored over here. So there are lessons that can be learned there. Of course, you've got to put them into a regulated GMP environment here. But the oil itself, it's, it's, it's very different than taking a lavender plant and extracting lavender oil or any, any type of single volatile isolation is, is traditionally a lot easier than, you know, the 140 or 147 now that, you know, volatiles that are in this plant. So a lot of, you know, if you're not careful in your extraction methodology or early on in the Canadian landscape, there were a lot of people just focused on THC and CBD. So, you know, if you use a hot process, hot, you know, supercritical fluid or hot ethanol, you know, you, you could potentially burn off some of those cannabinoids or, or, or phytocannabinoids that, and never to be recovered. So traditionally, you know, understanding the equipment, understanding the process, um, understanding that what you're going to be putting in and, and looking to take out is, is a crucial step before you go and, and, and buy that uh, piece of equipment. So really, where, where we differ, I mean, we're an OEM manufacturer. So instead of buying things, assembling them, and selling them, we actually innovate, develop, and manufacture from steel to product. So we work very closely with our partners, and you know, there are innovation sources. The bottlenecks or, or, or the research departments, you know, ultimately, as they're developing products that need more CBG or CBN, or some of these lighter things, to, you know, they can be hard to isolate and come in, in very minute potencies. So we work, you know, we have PhDs, engineers on staff, but we work very, very closely with our clients to help them solve any of the challenges that are in their business. Because ultimately for us, the more successful they are, that, then that's better for us as well. So one of the things we talk about is, is you know, building for the future, and it's something I've touched on, and, and it becomes increasingly important in, in, in the EU. And, you know, I, I commend Malta Enterprises and, and the, health, the medical health authorities here for really setting up a framework that is, is conducive to business, but also very regulated and controlled. So we've seen a lot of in innovation, a lot of investment here. And, you know, we're currently building a number of the facilities here for the LOI holders. Um, but this is going to be a very interesting market for input biomass, formulations, and then really a, a leader in, in the European market. So we're upstairs. If anyone wants to chat, there's a lot more we can cover, but I'm being cognizant of time here. I do have two minutes left if there are any questions. Otherwise, we'll keep going. Thank you.